A rational number is a number that can be written as the quotient of two integers. Frequently it's written as a fraction, or it could just be written as a division problem. But let's look at these here. So if I want to show that these are rational numbers, all I'm going to do is I'm going to write them as a division problem. So this first one, 7, is going to just be 7 divided by 1. Second one, 5 times 4 plus 3, that's going to give me 23 over 4. It's a rational number. doesn't matter if it's a negative, but 7 times 4 plus 1 is going to give me 29. It's a rational number. And 3 fourths is a rational number already. If you wanted to show that these were all rational numbers the other way, you could do it this way. And almost all the numbers we've been working with so far are rational numbers, so keep that in mind. So there's two types of decimals. When you change a fraction into a decimal, there's repeating decimals and there's terminating decimals. So I'm going to do the division for these and you're going to see what happens. So in this first one, if I add a couple of zeros on after the decimal point, I'm going to end up with 0 0.75 or 75 hundredths as my answer. So that's a terminating decimal because it ends. So on this second problem, it's going to be a repeating decimal. And if you notice, what happens is I'm going to end up with 0 0.6666 forever. So the way I'm going to write that is I'm going to write that with what's called a vinculum. It's that bar that goes over the top that indicates a repeating decimal. And don't forget the negative part because there's that negative associated with it too. So now in this problem we're being asked to compare decimals or you know, compare fractions by using decimals. So I'm just going to do the division here and then see which one is bigger. So here I've done the division for all of these. I didn't finish off the middle problem because I don't need to because all I need to do is figure out which one's bigger. So here, this one here is 0 0.2. This one here is going to be 0 0.25 with some extra on there. This one's 0 0.06. So which one's biggest? One that's biggest is going to actually be this one right here. So it has the biggest value. This one has the second biggest value, and this one has the third biggest value. So that's how you compare using decimals. So if I write these as um, changing them from terminating decimals to fractions, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to count and see how many spaces over I have here. So if I look here, this would be, if I were to recall this out, this would be 54 hundredths. So I'm just going to put 54 over 100. Then I'm going to simplify that. That's going to be, end up being 27 over 50. This one here is going to be 6 tenths. Don't forget the negative. And that's going to be 3 fifths. Once again, don't forget the negative. This last one here is going to be, well, I'm going to leave the 1 off to the side, and that's going to be 12 over 100, because it's 12 hundredths. And so it's going to be 1 and 6 fiftieths, which is going to be 1 and 3 twenty fifths. So that's how you change terminating decimals into fractions. So in this problem here, I'm being asked to write this out, it says here, write 0 0.82 with a vinculum over the top as a fraction. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to use my algebraic reasoning. So if you look here, if I say 0 0.82 with a vinculum over the top is equal to x, that's what that says here, then if I multiply that by 100 times, it's going to be 82.82 with a vinculum over the top. And the reason why I'm multiplying it by 100 is that I need to deal with two decimal places in the vinculum. If I were only dealing with one space in the vinculum, I'd multiply it by 10. If I was dealing with three spaces in the vinculum, I'd multiply it by 1,000. So that's how you end up going ahead and deciding how many uh, you need to multiply in the second equation there. So now I can set this up as a way of one on top of the other, which I'll show you now. So the way I set this up was, I'm saying 100x is equal to 82.82 with the vinculum over the top, and then underneath that I'm having x is equal to 0 0.82 with the vinculum over the top, um, right there, um, and those both things are equal. So when I subtract this and when I subtract this, they're both going to be equal amounts, so that's just using 
uh, a general property of math, I can subtract the same thing from both sides, and then I'm going to end up with an equal expression. So when I subtract 1x from 100x, I'm going to end up with 99x. When I subtract 0.82 with a vacuum from 82.82 with a vacuum, I'm going to be left with just 82. Then to solve this, I'm just going to divide both sides by, eight, uh, by 99, and I'm left with x is equal to 82 divided by 99. And that's my answer. So I'm going to do another problem here quickly. I'm just going to come up with a solution. You can follow through and pause as necessary to see the work. So when I do all the work here, same thing, I'm going to multiply by 10 this time instead of just by 100 in the previous slide. I'm going to end up with 9x is equal to 3. Divide both sides by 9, I get x is equal to 3 over 9, which is going to be equal to 1 third. And yes, there are a lot of 9s involved when you're figuring this stuff out, and that's how it works. So thanks, and good luck.